In this episode of Star Hopping with Kissimmee Park Observatory, we'll look at the Canes of Anatasee and Ursa Major regions and show you how to find these beautiful deep sky objects. Messier 106, the Pinwheel Galaxy, and the Whirlpool Galaxy. All right, let's go star hopping. Hey, hello, hi, and welcome to episode 16 of Star Hopping with Kissimmee Park Observatory. I'm Dave Hearn, and I'm absolutely energized to be your host. In this series of programs, we'll show you the most beautiful sights in the night sky and explain exactly how to find them with your binoculars or your telescope. So we're back to locating deep sky objects this week after our star hopping extra last time, where we learned about the different types of galaxies. Good thing, because as promised, we'll be looking at galaxies for several weeks going forward. There might be a globular cluster or two thrown in for good measure. In this episode, we're looking at three spiral galaxies, one tilted from our perspective, and the last two we view as face-on spirals. I do need to say that these three targets are viewed best after midnight during this time of January to really allow them to get some altitude so we can see them better. Over the next several months, they'll be climbing closer to the zenith, and as I mentioned last week, with galaxies and mostly all deep sky objects, the higher, the better. So don't forget to revisit these galactic beauties in your observing session in the coming months. So we'll leave the most famous two galaxies for last, but our first target is no slouch. Messier 106 is one of the largest and brightest spirals in the sky, located in the constellation of Cain's Venatici, the hunting dogs. M106 is a large, massive type SB spiral system with a tightly wound structure tilted 25 degrees to our line of sight. Remember, as we discussed last week, the SB designation specifies that the spiral arms are tightly wound around the core. The 25 degree tilt explains why this galaxy's dust lanes are so prominent. They form a spiral pattern which can be traced the whole way back to its bright central core. M106 was a very late addition to the Messier list, only being added in 1947. To locate M106, we have a few fainter stars in our star hop, so it's a medium difficulty hop. We'll be starting on the second magnitude star Fecta and the third magnitude star Megrez in the bowl of the Big Dipper within Ursa Major. Megrez is the star that connects the handle to the bowl of the Big Dipper. Imagine a right triangle with the hypotenuse formed between Megrez and Fecta. Near the third point at the right angle, you'll see a sixth magnitude star. That's the first move. As you start moving downward, you'll pass very close to M109, another spiral galaxy, but it's pretty faint at magnitude 9.6. Just below about a half degree to the right is a second sixth magnitude star. Now we'll move across the border into Cain's Venatici. Move about two degrees to the lower right to fourth magnitude, five Canes Venaticorum. Now move about three degrees to the right and slightly upward to three Canes Venaticorum. Okay, last move. Slide to the right about two degrees and you'll see the large hazy oval of Messier 106 coming into view. M106 has one large hooked spiral arm that tends to show up in astrophoto as well, like this one from KPO. Can you see it visually? This relatively bright galaxy shines at magnitude 8.4 and is over a quarter degree in size for its long axis, about half the size of the full moon. Additionally, there are several small galaxies in the vicinity which you might pick up if you scan around a bit. Okay, as promised, on to the two even more famous galaxies. The first is the grand design spiral Messier 101, also known as the Pinwheel Galaxy. We talked about this galaxy last week. As we mentioned, a grand design spiral is a face-on spiral galaxy that has long spiral arms that consistently wrap around the core. This is definitely the case with this mind-blowing galaxy, found just off the handle of the Big Dipper in Ursa Major. The pinwheel is bright, shining at magnitude 7.9, with a diameter just less than the full moon at 28 arc minutes. 
With such a large diameter, one would expect to easily find this target, but the light from this spiral is spread across a large area, which gives us a low surface brightness. We saw a similar condition with the Helix Nebula in Aquarius back in episode five, where a deep sky object can become easy to miss when it has a large apparent size. But don't worry, this is a fairly obvious star hop. So if you have a reasonably dark sky, you'll see this denizen of the deep sky. Okay, let's hunt a grand design spiral. We're starting with a special treat though. The second star in the handle of the Big Dipper is called Mizar, which will be our starting point. If you have good eyes, you'll be able to see with your naked eye a second star very close to Mizar. This is Alcor, and it lies within three light years of Mizar. Astronomers feel that this is probably too far to have any gravitational interactions, so they're not a true double star. However, Mizar itself is a double star. In fact, it has the distinction of being the first double star to ever be discovered with a telescope. So before we move anywhere, pop in a high power eyepiece and you'll see the double Mizar and its close companion Alcor. Actually three stars where you started out seeing just one. But I digress. Onward to the Pinwheel Galaxy. Put your low power eyepiece back again because you'll need a wide field. From Alcor, move about a degree and a half to the lower left to fifth magnitude 81 Ursa Majoris. Now move about a degree downward and slightly to the right to fourth magnitude 83 Ursa Majoris. Now make a quick half degree jump downward to fifth magnitude 84 Ursa Majoris. Another degree downward, you'll find fifth magnitude 86 Ursa Majoris. We're right on top of M101. Move about a degree to the lower left, passing a seventh magnitude star about halfway, and you'll see the sky brighten in a large area. This is the circular glow of the face-on spiral Messier 101. This is another fun test of your deep sky vision. See if you can determine the direction of the rotation of the spiral arms, then look at a picture and find out if you can see these fine details. Again, at midnight on January 22nd, this target is only 19 degrees up. So if you find it to be difficult then, break out the coffee and wait an hour or two before trying again. Okay, let's move on, leaving the best for last, to one of my most favorite deep sky objects. I like it so much, I featured it in our star hopping logo, Messier 51, or the famous Whirlpool Galaxy in the constellation of Keynes Venatici. It's one of the most conspicuous and best known spiral galaxies in the sky. M51 is actually interacting with its much smaller neighbor, NGC 5195. The two galaxies may be seen in binoculars under very dark skies. So this is a short two star hop, so it's considered easy. We'll be starting at the end star in the handle of the Big Dipper, second magnitude, Alcade. From Alcade, about two degrees to the upper right, you'll see fourth magnitude 24 Canes Venaticorum. Now move two degrees to the right, and you should run into two smudges of light very close to one another. This is the famous Whirlpool Galaxy. One of my favorite tests that I do with my fellow observers is to look for the connecting arm between M51 and NGC 5195. Under excellent conditions, you can see the faint line of stars being pulled from M51's companion galaxy. Try out multiple eyepieces and use averted vision to pull out faint details. I never tire of looking at this one, especially in a really large telescope. I've seen the Whirlpool in a 36 inch telescope at the Winter Star Party in the Florida Keys. And the spiral structure, the direction of rotation, and the complete connecting arm were all visible without using averted vision. You could look straight at it all from the top of a 12 foot ladder looking through this monster of a telescope. If you ever have a chance to attend the Winter Star Party, you should make an effort. It is a great time with a wonderful group of amateur astronomers. Okay, let's review. We've started our survey of galaxies with a bang. We first checked out the large and bright spiral Messier 106 in Keynes Venatici. Then we moved just off the handle of the Big Dipper to see the gorgeous grand design spiral Messier 101, also known as the Pinwheel Galaxy. And finally, we moved to the other side of the handle of the Big Dipper, back into Keynes Venatici to find the famous Whirlpool Galaxy and its companion, NGC 5195. 
And that's our three targets for this week. For those of you listening to the podcast form of this episode, you can find the show notes at kpobservatory.org slash sh016. And to get more information or to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or Stitcher, see our website again at kpobservatory.org slash podcast. I hope you've enjoyed star hopping around the Milky Way. We'll continue to bring you these video astronomy tutorials every week on Thursdays and then their podcast format on Fridays. They'll be designed to help you find deep sky objects that are up in the sky at the time we post them on the internet. The reason we create these videos and podcasts is to help beginning amateur astronomers learn the sky and get more enjoyment out of their telescopes and astronomy in general. If you have any questions or suggestions of potential targets in the night sky that you'd like to see us present, just let us know down in the comments section below or on our website blog. Don't miss our free field notes for this episode, basically the script of the show with all the images and the star charts that we use for our star hopping activities. You can get them for free at kpobservatory.org slash field notes. If this is the first time you're checking out star hopping, and if you found this video useful, please consider subscribing to our channel by clicking the big yellow button down there, click the thumbs up on the video, and please share this tutorial out to your friends who like looking at stars. Also, as I just mentioned, please feel free to leave any questions or comments below, and we'll be sure to respond quickly. Also, please follow KPO on Facebook, where we post all of our astrophotos and keep everyone informed about upcoming astronomical events. We'd love to hear from you to discuss all this great stuff up in the sky. All the links to these places in cyberspace, including our website, kpobservatory.org, can be found below in the show notes as well. And finally, if you feel this video provides you value and you'd like to see more, please consider supporting us on Patreon, where for a small amount per video, you can support our efforts and help us make even more great astronomy tutorials just like this one. Well, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time on Star Hopping with Kissimmee Park Observatory.